CJ, bam, we're back. The Zero Powerlifting Podcast. Today, I want to talk about understanding your technique. Um, this is a really important subject. This is a subject that's very close to my heart. Uh, it's very close to my heart because this concept is basically the thing that birthed the Zero Coach Development System, which is where I took everything that I know about powerlifting, strength training, coaching, uh, programming, business around this stuff and turned it into a complete year-long course. Um, taken all the principles, taken all the way that those principles can be applied and demonstrated and turned it into a, um, a product where you can learn everything about coaching this stuff. Um, it's all born because of one concept, which is understanding technique. Um, what I mean by that, technique is like the end of the line if we're talking powerlifting. If we're, so if we're talking powerlifting, powerlifting ex is expressing your strength through a one rep max squat, bench press, deadlift, right? So how you express that strength is directly related to your ability to do that via your movement. That is your technique. And the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because you can search low and high. You will not find a gold standard for technique in the sport of powerlifting. You will not find a gold standard uh, when it comes to squat, bench press, deadlift. And this is so, so, so detrimental in so many ways. Um, I'm going to explain why, and then we're going to turn it into something a little bit more practical that you can actually take away and that you can actually use, right? Um, so probably the easiest way to use this is to turn it like analogous to something like physiotherapist, uh, physiotherapy, right? So if I'm doing a bench press and I mess up my shoulder, when I go to see the physio, they don't say, okay, you've messed up your shoulder. Let me take a photo of your shoulder. Let me send uh, you away to get an x-ray, a CT scan, an MRI. Then we're going to take all of those images. And we're going to send them away to somewhere that can make a perfect model of your shoulder. We're going to get that shoulder back in here. And I'm going to show you, Thomas, this is your shoulder. This is the injury that you've caused. And this is how we're going to fix it. No, no, they don't have to do that. They reach under their desk. They pull out a shoulder. They say, you're a human. This is a human shoulder. You have all of this. This is what you've done. And this is how we're going to fix it. So universally, even though we're all different shapes and sizes, we are the same animal. We have the same joints. We have the same base movement patterns. That's why we can have an anatomy class because we don't have to relate it to individuals, right? When we then look at that as applied physiology, we all move the same. Yeah, we're different shapes and sizes, but we all have base principles of movement. Because in powerlifting, something like that, we don't relate our movement back to these base principles. There is no gold standard. So if we can figure out a gold standard, if we can say these are the principles that drive performance in these particular movement patterns, this is the direction that we want everyone to go. It gives us a much clearer understanding of how we can address this stuff. And you, you'll see the impacts of this issue everywhere. Go to all your favorite experts on Instagram that are talking about lifting. They're all going to have different ideas of what technique is. They're going to all have different pictures of what a squat is, a bench press, a deadlift is. Everyone is doing the absolute best they can with the knowledge and the information that they have. But because there's no consistency, we're bombarded with a whole bunch of different messages. This makes it really hard to digest and understand as a lifter because you get these conflicting messages from different uh, places. This also makes it hard to digest and understand as a coach because it's hard to find education because there is no gold standard. Um, so it can get quite frustrating at times. You think of all the implications that come with this. Um, if you don't have a gold standard to rely on and all you have is anecdotal experience and you don't have the skills to get people to move in a particular way, eventually you're going to come to the conclusion that everyone's different and because everyone's different, different rules apply to different people. Or people are exceptions to the rules. So you'll start to see gray areas in people's coaching. And when you call the gray areas out, there can't be an answer to that. So let me explain this in, in, uh, in clearer terms. You know, If we say, okay, well, um, we don't have a gold standard of a deadlift. We're watching a deadlift and we say, okay, well, that person rounded their back a little bit. And we say, okay, well, there's, there's, there's actually a, a room for rounding the back in this case. They can, they can round their back. No matter what we cue, they can't get the back straight. And uh, when, or, or if we do cue them, they get the back straight, they're much weaker. So rounding the back is okay in that case. But when this person rounds their back, they get injured, so we need to keep their back straight. That is a gray area. 
That is not consistent approach to technique. That's not um, formulating a base to work from. What it's highlighting is a misunderstanding of movement. What it's highlighting is the inconsistency in a coaching approach. And this is riddled throughout the industry. Um, makes it really, really, really hard to have a consistent conversation or put out consistent message out there because people are arguing from a different gold standard and they're never, ever, ever going to reach a compromise because they're arguing two different things. There's one person's trying to argue that orange is the best fruit and they've never tasted an apple. They've never, they don't know an apple exists. The other person's trying to argue apple is the best fruit. They don't know an orange exists. They're never going to find a middle ground. So we need to be able to understand the technique that we're trying to use because that is going to formulate the entire base of our training. It's going to formulate how you approach your program. It's going to formulate your accessory exercise selection. It's going to inform how you then perform those accessory exercises. So in the absence of a gold standard, I believe there is a gold standard. That's what Zero is all about. That's what the coach development system is all about. It's about we've created a gold standard and we relate everything back to that gold standard. Um, in the absence of that, you're going to have to create your own gold standard. <laughs> you're going to have to be able to say, this is what I believe a squat should be. This is my ideal of perfection and everything you need to do, everything you do needs to work towards that. That is then going to inform the kind of exercises that you choose. It's going to inform the, the way that you perform those exercises and that's going to change the game for you. So it's going to make you realize then when you read someone's post about the benefits of a particular exercise, it's going to help you assess, does this particular exercise actually fit within the framework of what I understand my gold, con my gold standard to be. So for example, one thing that me as a coach, I got criticized pretty heavily for maybe going back five or six years is I don't think that uh, pause deadlifts are a particularly good accessory movement. Uh, the reason I don't think that they're a particularly good accessory movement is because I'm looking at them through the lens of what I understand the gold standard deadlift to be. So if my idea of a deadlift is different to your idea of a deadlift and we're arguing or we're discussing whether or not a particular accessory accessory movement is going to benefit the deadlift, we need to have an idea of what the deadlift is. We need to be on the same page there first before we understand what this accessory is trying to achieve. So the reason why I don't believe the pause deadlift is a particularly good uh, accessory exercise in the zero framework all comes down to context all comes down to what are we trying to achieve so in the gold standard of a uh, deadlift in, in the way that i see things or the way that zero sees things the deadlift doesn't have an eccentric component doesn't have a down part we start coming up all the issues that you're faced with in a deadlift are born of your starting position if the starting position is out of the way that you've set up and gotten into position loaded in position in the actual position you start in is out, it's going to affect the rest of the movement. So if we're trying to fix the deadlift, we need to fix the movement from the very bottom. In that case, then a pause deadlift doesn't make quite as much sense because we're stopping midway through the concentric portion. This would be like doing a pause squat halfway up during the squat, doing a pause bench halfway up during the bench press, which you very, very, very rarely if ever see people doing and touting that this is helping with position. In the, in the context of someone who can perform the perfect deadlift, a pause deadlift would be great in terms of modulating intensity, making the exercise harder without adding weight. I think that would be a valuable idea. But the notion of improving position, the notion of working through the sticking points, none of that makes sense from what I see the gold standard of the deadlift to be. And that context is very important. You need to understand your context if you're going to select the right accessory exercises for you. If in your context you believe that that particular exercise has a great deal of meaning and value, go for it. If in your context, you just want to make things harder for the sake of making things harder without adding weight, go for it. That makes a lot of sense. To me, a pause deadlift is like learning to swing a golf club, starting the swing, stopping halfway, and then keeping on going. Doesn't make a great deal of sense. What I'd prefer to see is something more dynamic that involves the starting position. So something like a tempo to the knee, something like a uh, deficit, for example. Uh, so again, it's not saying that that particular exercise is useless it's saying that it doesn't have as much relevance to my gold standard as other exercises might have and if i can pick a better exercise i'm going to go with that exercise that's why some ch coaches choose pause squats some coaches choose tempo squats some coaches choose pin squats it doesn't matter as long as you can relate it 
back to the main lift and understand that the only way the main lift improves is with the main lift itself. So those regressed exercise need to mean something for that main lift. Go back and listen to our accessory episode that's going to provide some more insight into how we view accessories and how you can build your accessories to complement the main movement. It all hinges on what your understanding of the main movement is. Work that out. Your programming, your progress will go through the roof because it's going to be so much more geared towards you making bit, making you better at what you want to be better at. Hope that helped. If you have any questions on that, if you're interested in programming or coaching, hit us up. We're always happy to help. We'll see you next time.